Ooh, welcome back to Gangs All Here, our New York Jets podcast from the New York Post. Jake Brown here alongside my co-host, Brian Costello, Jets beat writer at the Post. Follow us on Twitter at Brian Cos, at Jake Brown Radio. Subscribe on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Jets Dolphins this week, we have you covered previewing the two and two Jets as they fight for a potential spot in first place. I just say that slowly because something I haven't said in about 12 years since our guest who will join us. That's Mike Westoff. One of the great special teams, arguably the greatest special teams coach ever, author of the book, Figure It Out. He's going to join us. And, you know, Mike never holds anything back, whether it's a Zoom, a phone call, in a hurricane, not in a hurricane. He, we are glad to have talked with him. I know Fort Myers, his area in Florida, got hit hard. So our thoughts and prayers are with everyone in Florida. He lost a few cars. You know, not everyone was as lucky. Not everyone was a coach in the NFL for so many years. There's a lot of people who got hit. So if you have chances there to, donate and help out the people of Florida definitely do so well you might have to donate to our hearts cause if Zach Wilson is out on Sunday I mean the jubilation that he and the Jets brought us in a victory on Sunday limited in practice a bit of an ankle injury this cause could just be a precaution we hope he will play we won't know I guess until Friday or Saturday but what you heard, what did you hear from Salah? What do you think? Does Zach play? Yeah, I don't think he's in jeopardy of not playing, Jake. I don't think it's that far. I mean, Salah described it as uh, Nixon bruises is what he said first. And then we pressed him and he said, oh, it's an ankle uh, he's dealing with. Um, limited in practice on Wednesday during the portion that was open to the media. We get to watch the first 20 minutes, Jake, of practice. He was not out there. They said he was inside uh, warming up and he was going to join the team for – the installs and everything. But, um, you know, I think we'll see as the week goes on, you know, I, I wouldn't be too worried if he's just limited Wednesday, he should be able to play, but obviously something to watch Jake. Yeah. Let's see. I mean, this could just be a precaution also with the weather and maybe the sloppy field conditions. Well, they're you know, indoors. Play. They're indoors. Okay. Well, yeah. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see myself yeah. out. They don't, pra- they don't practice outside when it's like this. That's yeah. right. That's right. Okay. Well, listen, it's better. I, I Just rest up. Just be ready for Sunday. I do not want to see Joe Flacco again at MetLife Stadium on Sunday. The first game I'm not at. I'm going to sit this one out, watch at home, and get prepare for a potential game three. I'm dealing with nicks and bruises of the Mets blowing the eight and at least and going to the wild card. But they will be in the playoffs this weekend, thank God. So we'll see if they play Sunday if, during that game. And If the Mets uh, sweep, will you go to the Jets game Sunday? Uh, no, I'm going to watch it. I, I actually like Reds. I you know Part of me wants to go, but I'm going on the 30th. We got the live podcast, Jets Pats, after that game. Um, I feel like I just need a game to sit out. I mean, the way they've played the first two, maybe if I don't go, they'll play better mm-hmm. and win. That's that's my philosophy that's here. Um, but part of you will see Sunday morning, I might change my mind and, and get a last minute ticket. So uh, we'll see. I need I do need the fan experience. I've been doing the credential route and sitting with you guys. And uh, I mean, and there hasn't been anything to cheer for. So it's worked out. But <laughs> hopefully Zach does bring something to cheer for. He'll be in offensive line without Max Mitchell. Dwayne Brown, you said before you expect him to play. They haven't. I think him. he's going to play. Uh, they they took him off of. He deactivated his practice window on Wednesday when we're taping this. Um, my gut says he's going to play. I think they'll push it because desperate times, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I think he'll probably play, and I think you'll see AVT now moving over to right tackle after left tackle last week. I think they'll move him over to right tackle, um, and, and so they'll they'll have yet another offensive line shakeup. Are you confident that they could hold up this offensive line could hold up against a pretty strong Miami front? Uh, I have some questions. I mean, Dwayne Brown hasn't done anything in a while, so I don't know what he's going to look like. Um, I thought AVT played well at left tackle. I would expect him to be okay at right tackle, but it's just uh, hard for me to answer that right now, Jake. I just don't know what to expect from this group. It's going to be interesting. You know, that Jets beleaguered O-line against a pretty good young defensive front in Miami, Christian Wilkins and Ogba and Melvin Ingram and Phillips. And that's going to be tough. You know, Miami, the good news is two is out. I mean, let's not good in terms of injuries. It sucks what happened to him. But they'll get to see old friend Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy never really got his shot here, guys. He never got a chance to start. The Jets traded him away. He was fighting. He might have been better than Sam Darnold. You know, we expect he probably would have been the way what we saw from Sam Darnold. But 
Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. You know, Teddy struggled a little bit, 14 to 23 or 14 to 25, 193 touchdown and a pick and relief for Tua Thursday night game. He's got, a, he had an extra few days of rest an extra few days to prepare for this Jets defense. This is going to be an intriguing matchup. Yeah. It's always different, Jake, when you have a week to prepare and they can build a game plan for Teddy that he likes and, and find the plays that he likes. So I, I would think you'd see a pretty good effort from Teddy. I uh, remember Teddy was the quarterback last year in Denver when he beat the Jets 26 to nothing in Denver. So they've seen him recently. Um, you know, I think <laughs> Teddy, Teddy's going to look pretty good with those receivers, right? I think those receivers are going to make a lot of quarterbacks look good with Tyree Kale and Jalen Waddell. Mike Kosicki to a tight end. They've got a lot of weapons, the Dolphins. So this is going to be an interesting challenge for the Jets secondary. It's an interesting revenge game, Kaz, on two notes. You mentioned Tyree Kill, a guy who it seemed to be down to the Dolphins and the Jets he was going to go to. Recently, he said he wasn't coming here because the New York taxes were too high. I, you know, Jersey. I, I, I think Jersey taxes. I think he was referring to James. Is Jersey yeah. taxes higher than New York? There's just no. Uh, way. They live in New Jersey, though. Nobody, nobody plays for the Jets. Lives in New York, really. They usually live in New Jersey. All right. Well, yeah, the Jersey taxes. Jersey taxes are Jersey taxes are. I can tell tell you are atrocious. Yes. Really? They're they're worse than New York. I guess they're pretty much the same. I don't yeah, know. I mean it depends on where you are. Manhattan is probably worse, but you know, I know I know my friend Dennis Wazak from the AP just moved from Staten Island to Jersey and he's a little shocked at the taxes that he's paying here now. Well, he made a good decision leaving Staten Island. Anyone who lives oh, in Staten Island, oh, I'm sorry. It's, oh, it, it's oh, a disgrace that a it's a borough. I mean, Long Island should just replace Staten Island as a borough. It is just a trash. Dumps right. fire. Can we note this yeah. note this down for end of season? If we're if we have nothing to talk about, we're gonna revisit Staten Island. Um Burma. I did a podcast on things years ago that like should be eliminated from the world. And Staten Island and Burger King, I think we're atop the list. Uh Burger King has really just gone. We, we've talked about that before. Burger King, and these are December conversations. Yes. But Burger King is also a dumpster fire. So they that they should get married. Just to, you know, marry those two things, Staten Island and Burger King. And they'll have the crappiest wedding in the history of mankind. Um, I was at a wedding in AC over the weekend. Had a nice time. But, you know, <laughs> Hearts is like, Jake, you need to get prescribed ADD medication. It's getting out of control. But, you know, this is, you know, Tyreek Hill, the revenge that the Jets didn't get him. He's talked about the taxes. And Teddy Bridgewater, the team that got rid of him, didn't give him a chance, you know, to get the job over Darnold, which was never going to happen. I mean, Darnold was the young guy. It was his job. We knew that. But, it's revenge on two fronts here, and it's setting up for an interesting matchup. You know, Zach, we talk about the injury. Will the re real Zach Wilson stand up, guys? Do we see the eight for 24, Zach? Or do we see the fourth quarter full of poise, 10 of 12, getting every target, Zach? Which one do we see? We need to see the more consistent Zach. We got to see him roll out. You know, if his ankle's bothering him, this might hurt, but I'd love to see some RPOs and see him use his legs a little bit. I know to the point where he could slide and stay healthy and be okay, but... At some point, Kaz, you're going to have to use his athleticism and his ability to run the ball against some of these good defenses. Wow, there's a lot to unpack there, Jake. You just I, I don't even know where to start. About the ADD or Zach? Wilson? Just, just <laughs> you just were all over the place there. Revenge, Zach. I do like the onion rings at Burger King, Jake. I'll, I'll say that. All right, this. onion rings uh, are fine. Their fries are just garbage, and their chicken nuggets they don't get, supply enough barbecue sauce. Get the uh, get the onion rings. Okay, so. <laughs> I don't think there's any revenge factor here. I don't think Teddy gives a crap about the Jets. That, that's a long time ago. He's played them since then. I think you Teddy don't gives... think there's something in the back of his mind like no. they didn't give me a shot. I'm going to no. show them who. I... You know, I, I think, think he, there's something. I think there. he should send them a thank you card that he got traded to New Orleans and got out of here <laughs> and didn't true. have to live through that's four and twelve 2018 season here. And he got to play or the taxes. He got to play under Sean Payton, <laughs> and you know he got to he 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 got plenty out of the Jets. Like they he. Getting traded in New Orleans helped him revive his career. So I think he's fine with the Jets. And Tyreek Hill, I don't think he cares about the Jets. Um, yes, he was almost almost a Jet for a few hours there in March. But uh, I think the Jets always knew he wanted to go to the Dolphins. That was his that was his choice. That's where he wanted to go. That's where he's from. So <clears throat> it was always going to happen as long as the Dolphins paid him uh, what he wanted. So I, I, I don't see that. In terms of Zach. Jake, I, I think you nailed it. It's which one are we going to see? I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see. Cause I, it was like, it was almost like three different versions of Zach Wilson you saw Sunday early on. I thought he played well and I thought he was doing some good things. Then all of a sudden 
end of the second quarter into the third quarter, he couldn't complete passes and he was missing a lot of short passes again, struggling. And then the fourth quarter, he was money 10 to 12, led them down the field twice to win the game. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know which one we're going to see on Sunday in terms of using his legs. I thought he had a nice run in the fourth quarter with there where he actually took a hit and that's where it's okay to take a hit in the fourth quarter when the game is on the line. He did that. And I thought, you know, he really, he might not have run a lot, Jake, like in terms of past the line of scrimmage, but he did a lot of moving behind the line of scrimmage to keep plays alive. He avoided a lot of sacks. He really showed a lot of athleticism there. I'm not sure if he's ever going to be this RPO machine that you and so many others hope he's going to be. It just doesn't seem like it's in the cards. Like, it's not what they want. I remember there was a quote last year, I think it was from Salah, where he said he's not Lamar Jackson. You know, so I don't know if they're ever going to do that with him. Uh, but I think his athleticism shows up in other ways. I do like when Zach, and you know he's not going to hand it off like in the fourth quarter, but when he has that like mini play action, it's not an yes. all-out play action, but it, it just looks it free- cool. It's- well, it freezes. I think it freezes the linebackers. I do think it freezes the linebackers every time. He's very good at that. I don't he know what it is, that. but it, it also looks cool. Like it's just there's some swag behind it that that I enjoy watching it. So I hope I see some more of those mini play actions, I'll call them. And you know, some of those he's just gonna have to hand off to Brees Hall. Brees Hall, we said this on the last show. He's dealing with nicks and bruises. Get those nicks and bruises together because Brees Hall needs 20 carries. I'm sorry. I Michael Carter it could be your re- receiving back. Brees Hall does everything, but the ground and pound guy's gotta be Brees Hall. He was fantastic. All right, Jets, Dolphins, cue the music. Here we go. Let's preview it. 1 p.m. CBS. Finally, Kevin Harlan, our friend, our guy, and Trent Green are on the call. And that's an A crew, cause You know, it's not great. It's better than Greg Gumbel. I'm sorry, but I love Kevin Harlan. He could, you know, he could call a chess match. He could call two turtles battling in a race. He could call paint drying on a wall, and he's going to make it entertaining. He could call that gender reveal in the field the other day where uh, one of the Rams – who was the Ram that tackled the fan? Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner tackled the fan, and that's what you get. First of all, the gender reveal attention thing is absurd. Second of all, you do that on a field – your your that kid was, might that, not even that see wasn't it. really a gender reveal, was it? Jake? It was. I, thought, I think I thought it was, was a protest. No, it was a protest. Was it a? Pro- it, it was, was a protest. Pink. I thought it was a gender yeah, reveal. Yeah, yeah. Now somebody made a joke out of that, saying the gender reveals are getting crazy, but it was a protest. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, well, whatever <laughs> it was, <laughs> I thought it was. Boy, that was a gender reveal. That's. A I'm like, you won't even be. You'll be behind bars when your yeah. kid comes out. No, I, I mean, think that was a God. joke. I think I think it was a it was a protest. All right. Well, that's not the best. You're way familiar with you familiar with Mike Curtis, Jake? Uh, he, f- former player, right? Colts linebacker. Yeah, he once drilled the guy running across the middle of the field in Baltimore. Ah, uh, yes, uh, okay. yes. And yeah, there's a great NFL films you can Google Mike Curtis, and uh, he talks about how the guy broke a city ordinance and he enforced it. Oh. And he was the original <laughs> drill the guy running on the field. It's great. It's great. You deserve it. You know that. And when security does it, but when a player does it, you know, it's just extra special because you know, they're in pain. Do you think we should show it on TV, Jake? Do you think they should get rid of that rule and just show it on TV? I mean, that's, you know, I don't know why they don't do that. Well, they feel like it encourages people to do it if they show it on TV. Well, they showed it, I think on the Manning cast, right? But they didn't show it on the ESPN broadcast. The Manning cast was breaking it down. I think they did. I know someone showed a video of it and tweeted it and that was out there. It's night and day. I mean, you got to watch the Manning cast. Plus they have good guests on there for these Monday night games like no Joe Buck Troy Aikman give me the manic cast it's Steph Curry on there Tracy Morgan the Giants game they get an A-list guest lineup uh anyways Jets and the Dolphins let's get there's back. a Jets connection to the Manning cast Jake did you know that what's that there's a Jets connection to the Manning cast really somebody helps Peyton with the film breakdown every week of the teams that he's going to watch from the Jets Former coach Adam Gase is the one who he does all of the football for the Manning cast to, to it, teach them the teams. Is this known information or did he just Sam Farmer? Yeah, I've known it for a while and I, I kept it quiet, but Sam Farmer and the LA Times did a story and he put it in there. So it's out. Oh, there. so there is a story. Okay. I thought we yeah. just had some scoopage there from Kyle. So Adam Gase, still yeah. alive and well, yeah. is part of the Manning cast. How about that? Yeah. Um, all right, that's enough Adam Gase talk. Well, Adam Gase relates because it is Dolphins Jets. Dolphins Jets, the two Gase teams ball. he coaches. The Dolphins are three point favorites, which essentially means they're almost calling this even, which I like. Kevin Harlan on the call, Trent Green, 1 p.m. CBS. Good crew. Here we go. Fun one to see, Kaz. 
the matchup to watch for me here, get your popcorn ready. Tyree Kill, Sauce Gardner, number one corner, number one receiver. That's going to be the matchup to watch. Break this game down, Kaz, and give me your pick. Yeah, I think the problem is, Jake, the Jets don't follow receivers, so it's going to be a little sauce, a little DJ Reed uh, on Tyreek. It won't be one versus one. They don't they don't really match up like that. Um, to me, Jake, the, the question is the Dolphins' pass defense against the Jets' passing offense. They are 31st in the NFL right now, the Dolphins, in pass defense. They are struggling. Xavier Howard is day-to-day as we record this. He might not play. Byron Jones isn't coming back. So they've been struggling. Now they have played some very good quarterbacks. So that could be why they're struggling. Can Zach Wilson take advantage of that is, is to me the question. I uh, I think the Dolphins will be able to do some things offensively. I think Tyreek, they won't be able to hold him down all day. So I think it's going to be a real close game, Jake. Real, really good game into the fourth quarter. I'm going Dolphins 28, Jets 20. Ah, I thought you were, the way you were talking, I thought the Jets pick was coming, but I figured you weren't going to pick them. I said last week I was going to not take the Jets for the first time this week. But I changed my damn mind. I just think Teddy Bridgewater is a solid quarterback, but I think the Jets are going to contain him. I think this in a 2-2 two and two season is going to be a raucous MetLife Stadium. Al Roker, let's check the temperatures. High of 61. It's going to be a nice, cool fall day. You have your hoodie on. The sun will be out. I just think the Jets are rolling. I think Zach's got a week under his belt. I think we're going to see him run a little bit, assuming his ankle's okay. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Jets are rolling? They're rolling. They're 2-2. Two and two. That's rolling. They were, they were losing 20-10. to 10 The win is a win, quarter. baby. Listen. I, I agree a win is a win, but let's, let's – they're rolling? Because they ain't going 0-3 to start the season at home. You can't do these promotional cool videos that the Jets have been doing and go lose your first three games and then tell me, you know what, let's go get tickets. Get tickets for uh, October 30th where we'll do the postgame show against the Patriots. They're going to go on October 30th saying get tickets because we finally won a home game. And we did it against the Dolphins. Listen, Teddy Bridgewater, you, you put pressure on him. He'll make a mistake. I'm telling you, Sauce is Sauce or DJ Reed is getting an interception. I think they're going to force a fumble. I'm calling two turnovers. That will change the outlook of this game. Brees Hall runs for 80 yards and a touchdown. Give me the Jets. 23-20. They win it on the legs of Greg the Leg. Zerline. And the Jets improved to 3-2. and two and fighting for first place. And then I guarantee you, cause next week I will not pick them because they will not the be Field. <laughs> they probably won't go to Denver and win, although the Broncos have not looked very good. I, I don't see them winning that game. Unless Russell Wilson's out. We'll see. You know, he's been dealing with an injury too. So the next couple of weeks will be tough. Patriots, we'll see. That, that game's really a toss-up. Patriots aren't very good. But I'm taking the Jets. Let's go. Let's make it three. Win a home game. Show up on Sunday. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. Two freaking terrible games in front of all your fans having everyone leave early beat the traffic sit in traffic after a win on sunday joining us next on gangs all here it's former jets special teams coach and author of figure it out mike westob right here on gangs all here joining us now on gangs all here is the friend of the program he's the best special teams coach in the history of the nfl many would say he was here with the jets from 2001 through 2012 part of those teams that made back-to-back AFC East Championship Games. He's also the author of the book, Go Get It Now. Figure it out. My 32-year journey while revolutionizing pro football's special teams. It's the great Mike Westoff. Mike, welcome to the show. Let the listeners know here. I know you got hit hard by this hurricane. You know, we're glad you could join us. I mean, making the time for us, we're gracious. Uh, how hard did you get hit? I heard a couple of your cars got ruined, but luckily you are. Yeah, good. I live in Fort Myers. I've been here for a long time. I have a beautiful home right on the golf course. We got hit hard. We had 150 mile an hour winds. We had a storm surge. Um, everyone's home got some water in it. I, I lost two cars. Uh, my marina where I keep my boat was pretty much destroyed, but my boat was fine. I had my boat up high in one of the big, uh, big barns and it was fine. So eventually they'll clean that up and I'll be okay there. So it's a matter of just rebuilding. But so many people here, uh, it was just destructive. They, they, they were destroyed. Sanibel Island is just destroyed. And that was my hangout. I loved it there. Uh, the causeway going over there was part of it washed away, which is hard to even conceive that that could happen, but it did. And so um, it, it's very, very difficult. I believe this will go down 
as the worst hurricane ever that ever hit anywhere. Mike, did you guys have much warning? I, I mean, I, it seems like it was a lot worse than they even projected it was going to be. I, I think well, what happened, Brian, is you just have to understand where a hurricane hits you and how what position you're in. And they pretty much had it pegged that it would go up through the Gulf of Mexico. It would stay west of Tampa and hit up in the the, the kind of the, where the where the state turns into the Panhandle. But it kept coming further and further east. It kept moving. And then so by the time it got toward us, now when it gets in the Gulf of Mexico, it picks up that deep, warm water. Right. I was out fishing the other day, and the water was 88 degrees. I mean, so it, that's, that's what builds the power. And then when a storm gets near you, you have to picture the storm as a clock phase, okay? And you have counterclockwise wind. So our storm, when the eye of it was just a little bit north of us, we were... As it started approaching us, if you picture the clock face, we were at one, two, or three, all right? Now, counterclockwise wind, so all of our water got sucked out into this 400-mile circle, this 400-mile clock face. By the time the hurricane moved north with the real strong winds, now we were at four, five, six, and it all came streaming back in, and a wall of water came in and just covered everything. So... That's where the destruction comes from. Uh, you could get me with Brian Norcost on your uh, on your TV down there. I did a pretty good job with that. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly how the hurricane works. And we happen to be at the exact worst place. Worst. Mm. Al Roker on Gangs All here. Here it's Mike Westoff. Uh, well, we're glad you're okay. And uh, you know, if if find Mike somewhere, send send him send him a check. Send him a car. I'm sure insurance will cover some of this but uh <laughs> glad you're okay ha in in other news as we talk jets here mike have you been watching the new york jets are two and two for what seems like the first time since you were a coach there i i have tried to watch i of course i wasn't able to watch this week i've been able to watch i, I was very excited and a little disappointed then excited again so and i did miss this one um i, I i'm sorry to, to see that because i think they did some good things from what i've heard and what i've read um so i'm i'm pretty happy i I remember early when I looked at the schedule, I predicted if they could end up winning about 35, about maybe 40% of that first six games or 30%, they would be in good shape and they're ahead. They're ahead of that. So, you know, I have to feel I'm encouraged and I'm a little bit excited. Mike, what do you think of um, Robert Sala and his coaching staff and what you've seen for a little, little over a year now into his second year? I like them personally. I, I thought my biggest question was, is the, the development of the offensive coordinator. I thought he had some growth to go with the young quarterback. And it seemed to me they would both be in stride. Then, of course, when the quarterback was out, then that kind of threw that curveball at that period of mind. But um, I like the way I, – I, I like some things that he's done. I think he'll mature as a coordinator. He'll, he'll be a little more diverse. And that, that, to me, is extremely uh, necessary. I like what Sala's done. I went to a practice. I was impressed with the practice. It was a good uh, – okay, I'll be uh, – this will be this, this will raise some hell. This will be interesting. Okay. Uh, this year, I also was at Miami. All right? I was at their practice. The New York Jet practice was a better practice, period, in the sentence. All right. There better you practice. go. Tell me why. What, what was my, the reason for that? My, and I've only been – I mean, I coached for 657 games, so I've been at a few practices. <laughs> you know, and I, and I, I said I was disappointed in the, in the Miami Dolphins' offensive practice. And I, I think they've got some great personnel. So I'm not being one bit critical of, of who they have. But I just didn't – I didn't – the practice – you know, and I've been – I mean, I was at Dan Marino his whole career. Well, then we had – I came up here. We had Vinny and, and, and Chad and then – and then uh, that, uh, excuse me, Brett Farr. Well, then I went to the New Orleans Saints with Drew Brees. So I think I know a little something about an offensive practice. So, I mean, I had, and, and I was more impressed with what I saw in New York. By the short time I was there in the practice, the way it was the organization, what they accomplished, and the tempo. Now, is, is, it, all, is it all encompassing? No, 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 it's not. But there's a lot of good things there, and there's a lot to build on.
Guys, I would imagine Mike hates the new as you. What, what do you call it? Uh, about the practices you Club what you said to Sal Club, Club Med. Med. I would imagine you hate the Mister Softy practices, Mister Softy training camps. No more two a days. You seem like the guy who was, you know, all geared to go for two a days and harder practices than they do today, Mike. Well, I think I think I like spacing it out the way we did it back in around eight and nine. You know, there were some rules there the way we had to do it. And, you know, we wouldn't have two padded practices consecutively. You know, we, we, we mixed in our walkthroughs. So we spaced it out. But yet we were still able to accomplish and get things done in a certain way. Because no matter what you say, NFL football is played at a particular pace. And you have to be ready for it. I mean, it's not – and this isn't soccer. No disrespect. But I think the athleticism of soccer is incredible. But come on. I don't know. You can pay me to watch a whole game. That's just the way I feel. <laughs> you know, football is the greatest. And these guys, you know, you have to, this is a hitting sport. You have to be ready for it. So, yeah, yeah, I, I get a little disappointed. And plus, you know, I was at Miami, and I really felt I was in a position to get that job. And Dan Marino pushed like hell for me to get the head coaching job, and I didn't at one time. And I got – that's when we used to do a thing among the coaches in the league, and I got elected by my coaching peers, and what, what I coached with as a coach of the year in National Football League and got fired. So, shoot me. But then the good news, I went to New York. And I love New York. I love it. So that was the good thing for me. But yeah, I, I believe in a in a good, solid, not a stupid practice. No disrespect, but Eric Mangini practiced stupidly. He did. And I liked a lot of things that Eric did. And I don't believe he deserved to let get let go. But he practiced stupidly. Now I think if I'd been with him a little longer, I could I could have mellowed that out and I would have helped him. But that's just the way I feel about it. So this will be good stuff for you. This will get everybody mad. <laughs> how hard is it mike you wrote about this in the book with with herm edwards um you know you're a veteran coach already he's kind of feeling his way as a head coach he was really struggling with time management um he was he was firing assistant coaches and and how hard is it though for you like to know when to speak up and try to help these guys as head coaches whether it was herm whether it was eric when, when he came or even rex when he came because um, you see, like now, Nathaniel Hackett at Denver, he's having some growing pains as a head coach. And I'm wondering, as a veteran coach, how, how do you know when to speak up in that situation? Well, with Herm, I was assistant head coach, so I was able to do that a pretty good bit. What The thing with um, – well, I'll go backwards. Rex did an excellent job of incorporating all of us, those that were coordinators and things, into the management process. He did an excellent job. I'm telling you, he did it. It, it, with the, the way we worked with officials, he really he really tried with Mike Pettin and myself and with him, the way we did some things, very good. Eric got better. He got better at it. And he was good during the game. Eric was good during the game. Some other times he, he struggled a little. But now with Herm, I thought he was great with the players. He had a great way with them. He understood he understood turnovers. He got he did a good job with that, but he was not very, you know, adept at any type of clock management. He was not never involved in game plans that I know. I never, I never saw any of it. And he left me alone, which was the smartest thing he did. He left me alone, and that's, I took care of my own. But, you know, sometimes I could get involved with it. But sometimes it, you, you, there's just not time. There's no time. You know, he's got to you, – you, you got to call a timeout or challenge. You know, you've you got to be on top of the game. And that's, that's what was tough. Now, with the firing of assistant coaches – that, that infuriated me. And most of the time, that happened unbeknownst to me. So all of a sudden, I'd say, well, what, do you, what do you mean we fired Teddy Cottrell? And we hired who? That's, that's the way I reacted. So, you know, that, that was very difficult. That was a tough, tough thing for me. I tried to get involved with it. Um, and it was, uh, frankly, I should have done a better, I wish I would have done a better job with him. But, but could have I changed it? I don't know. He did the same thing in Kansas City. He did the same thing at Arizona State. So you tell me if I could have changed. Do you think Zach Wilson is this team's franchise quarterback, future of the team, or have you not seen enough yet? What do you think? Uh, that's an that's an honest way to ask ask the question. I honestly don't know enough yet. I don't know. I wish I did. I was really hoping because I got there in camp and I liked a lot of what I saw. I was extremely impressed with his ability to make some very difficult throws. I was somewhat unimpressed with his somewhat throwing of what should be rote situations. You don't like it, dump it off. I didn't see that being smooth at all. So that made me a little nervous. So we'd have to see that progression. Uh, but he can make the tough throw to skid now. 
how good is he going to be? I was hoping that I would have been able to watch, you know, four, five, six games, but I haven't been able to do that just like you. So I think, I think the jury's still out a little bit. I really do. I, I, I like him. I hope it's not, but we're going to have to find out yet. Um, he's got better weapons. I'd like to see the running game improve a little bit, and I think that'll help him. I think he needs that. But I also want to see, does the coordinator develop along with him and get him a little bit more moving around and out of the pocket now? Will these injuries hurt that and slow that down? That scares me a little, because I think that's going to be necessary for him. Mike, uh, did you get to see the Cleveland game a few weeks back, the comeback game? I, I saw I, yeah. I, I did see it. I saw I saw all of it. Were you I love the fake I love the fake punt they ran. I was gonna say and you must have loved it. Love that game. Fake that punt a, and an onside kick. The, 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 the Mike West off special. That was exactly right. Thank you. The fake punt was a big play in that game. It was huge, yeah. Well that, that broke that broke the momentum that took them down, got a score. It was a great play. The onside kick. I'll give it. I'll give it equal credit to the kicking team and equal non-credit to the receiving team. <laughs> that guy on the receiving team has to squeeze up on that ball when he sees it, attack that ball, and smack it out of bounds. Right. Dive is, then the play would have been over. He sat there and he hesitated. He didn't do it. It's obvious that that situation, which you have to do to practice onside kicks, you've got to go out on a Saturday every single week and you go through all the little things that can happen. You can do it in a walkthrough, but you walk, you get everybody where they're going to be. You say, okay, if we have this kick, we do this. If we have this, kick, we do this. And then you can show them if you study film, how the kicker is going to kick the ball. You can, I, we used to go and show how some guys kicked when they were in college. We, we went that far back, but we didn't lose any. Don't so shoot me. We didn't lose them. So do whatever you want. You got to do what you got to do. What is the uh, key, Mike, to perfecting the onside kick? Like, was there a certain style that the kicker kicks it, a certain spin that you like best? What 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 was your best approach? That's a good question. That's really changed, Brian. That whole thing's changed because when I was there, you know, you could drive the ball down into the ground. It would shoot up in the air and all bets were off. You know, when I first started doing it with Alindo Mari in Miami, of which we we never lost one. We we got every, anytime he hit that kick right, we got it every time. Now when he didn't hit it right, then we did not. We we actually got three in a playoff game against New England. Three. Now one one they called back because of a penalty, which was not a penalty, Mike Ferreira. But anyway, um, we got three. But but see, the, it's so much difficult now because if you do that, the receiver has the right to make the play on the ball, and you can't interfere with it. So now it's an easy. So that the kick that I love, you can't do anymore. That's why that's why Mike Westhoff is fighting the hurricane and not coaching football anymore. <laughs> My stuff's gone. <laughs> they, they don't need me anymore. But I like that kind of spin kick that they did. That's pretty good. You know, what you have to do, and, and I, I don't know this, of course, you watch your guy do it, you try different things, you study that, you watch, and then all of a sudden you figure out what he's really good at. I like the way he did that. That was a well-kicked ball. So I think for them – the thing that I liked, no matter what you say, no matter that Cleveland didn't play it perfect, I agree, that's right. But it gave the Jets a chance. And if you can give your guys a chance, you've done a real good job. And I think the Jets did that. Mike, um, you know, obviously Jets fans remember your years here. And then you went to New Orleans. Sean Payton's future is going to be a big topic uh, in a few months here. Where, do you think Sean will be coaching again next year? And uh, – you know, obviously, everyone's going to point to Dallas. Do you think he'll end up in Dallas? I don't know where it's going to be. I, I'm 100%. I, I would say 100% that he will be. I mean, I talked. I know him pretty well. I, I talked to him. I know last year he was uh, – I, I can't go into everything. Trust me. <laughs> I just can't. In fact, I, I wrote in the book, as you know, um, I thought he's the best on-the-field teacher I saw in my 32-year career. Anybody. He's the best teacher. I mean, that I would I would go into games and I'd watch Drew and, and I'd watch and I I saw that exact same thing on Thursday. I saw it and Sean would direct every guy. So can you go here, you go here, you go here. And he said, all of a sudden, bam, Drew, there it is. And that's it was tremendous. Sean Payton is a good coach and he'll be back. Where I don't know, but whoever it is, they'll be good in a very short time. Mike, uh put you on the spot here. Woody Johnson and current ownership. Do you like the direction they're headed? Do you think they should sell the team or are you confident 
they could get the Jets back to the playoffs. That's no, I, I, I'm, I'm, I like Woody Johnson. I'm a fan. I think sometimes, you know, sometimes Woody's, sometimes his heart maybe is, is bigger than, than maybe I sometimes used, would wish it would, you know. Uh, but I, I love him. I think he's a good person. He was great to me personally. Um, I think he'll do, I know what he's built. I mean, go out to the place. It's spectacular. The food's great. They've done a great job. You know, the field's taken care of. It's manicured. Woody, I mean, I, I, I'm not getting the least bit critical of him at all. Uh, and, and I know there's some decisions. I, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to judge that. It's not my place to do that. Um, I'm a fan of his, and uh, I think he, he has every right to, to stay right where he was and whatever he decides to do. Um, so I'm, 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 I, 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 I would be, I'm, I'm on his side. I'm very much on his side. I'll give you another one, Mike. Uh, Joe Douglas uh, as GM. Now, Jake in the in Mike's book, the the GMs take some heat. I, I got to read book. this now. Book, Terry Brad, Terry, Terry Bradway and and Mike Tannenbaum take some heat in the book. I, I think Mike would agree with me. So, Mike, what do you what do you think of the job Joe Douglas has done here um, in his time? Okay. The only thing the only thing that I really know that I really know, I, I don't know, and I don't, I, I don't know, you know, I'm not working in the media like I used to and like you guys do. Um, I like the way he's handled uh, getting personnel in the draft. I think they, I think they've been very competitive. Uh, in the total free agency, I, I, I only, I'm, I, I feel okay. I don't know enough to really be confident to give you a good answer there. I'm sorry, I don't. The draft, I like, other than that, I, I, I think I'm I'm, I'm just the wrong, I'm the wrong person to ask. Better than Bradway, Mike. I get guys in my development they are better than Bradway. <laughs> oh, there's, there's the line of the interview right there. That was, that was a good one. Uh, the, the book is called Figure It Out. Go get it now on Amazon, wherever books are sold. Mike Westoff, uh, glad you could join us during the hurricane. We really appreciate the time and uh, looking forward to reading the book. I know you were supposed to be with Gotham City crew at, I think, House of Q. You were supposed to do some stuff this week, but obviously no, you have some more important we things were, in store and glad you're you're okay. We were, com- we, we were coming up for all the book signings and they will we'll just do it again. Um, and, and the people we, we've gone to a couple and they've been great. They did a great job. It was a lot of fun. I plan on doing more. Um, I'm extremely proud of the book. There, there's yeah, there's a there, there, there's a couple smacks at people. Yeah, yeah, Terry, you can. But but most of it is extremely positive. Is. I'm proud of it, and I it's a good sports story, and it's all true. Every single thing happened that way, and I'm very very proud. And uh, I've, I've well, but when you're a small, you know, guy like us, like independent, you know, that you don't get the sales that you'd like to get. But we've done exceptionally well, and we've got very high ratings. So I'm very proud of what we did. And I'm happy to come to New York and talk about it because I love New York. I love my time there and, and it was the best maybe 10 years of my life. Well, we're looking forward when you do. I know I'll be doing a live podcast October 30th after the Patriots game. So maybe we'll see you then. If not, go get the book, figure it out. ST coach Mike as well. Follow him on Twitter. Mike Westoff. Appreciate you coming on gangs all here. Okay. Thanks guys. Thank you for asking. Thank, thank Thanks. you.